Hello, happy Sunday afternoon. Oh my gosh, I'm sleepy today. It's uh, one of those Sunday days, any day. It's raining, it's cloudy, um, it's a little on the warm side, and I'm just, I am so sleepy today. I got myself some um, iced coffee, and I'm hoping that that will um, perk me up here a little bit. It did as I was driving home Friday after a very long four hours at the fiber fair. I think it was more like three and a half, but it was a long stretch and I had to drive home and I was like, I'm going to McDonald's, I'm getting some iced coffee. I need something and it worked, I stayed awake. Hubby fell asleep while he was uh, in the passenger seat there, but I stayed awake. Anyway, we have goodies to show you, and they are from mostly from the Fiber Fair, but the very first thing I want to show you is not. One of the other hobbies that I do is stamp collecting, and it is a small unknown hobby very well loved by those of us who are involved in it my dad got me in it he was a stamp collector he was a small stamp dealer would go to to what was the equivalent of our fiber fairs for stamps and uh, have his little table there and be very very happy if he sold enough to as he called it make table which was the rent for the space that he did he loved it. He instilled the love of it uh, into me early in my, you know, childhood. I had my own little stamp album while he worked on his. My mom and dad enjoyed it in their later years after they retired. So it's just something that I really um, have off and on been very, very active with and right at the moment I'm not. But I do go to the post office and I do try to use the new um, releases of stamps whenever I'm mailing something. And the post office puts out a lot of stamps. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, maybe you only pick up your stamps where they have a roll of flags or whatever. But this is what appeals to a lot of people who collect the stamps is the fact that the designs are fun or interesting or whatever. Well, as I always do when I go into the counter, I say, you know, what you got new? And they get out their little book and they're in plastic sheets and she's flipping through and she says, have you seen the Heritage Breed one? I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it's I'm all about the, the shave them to save them and that, those words, Heritage Breed, right? And she says, yeah, she says, it's really interesting how they posed all these animals, you know, so that they could get their photos and that sort of thing. But that's what it is. It is a U.S. sheet of stamps with, I think, 10 different designs for 10 different rare, rare breeds, not just sheep. Okay, we've got all sorts of things. And it is actually what the Livestock Conservancy supports right the breeders who raise these breeds that are considered rare and in this case heritage so i was like very very happy and i wanted to show it to you there are duplicates on here there's 10 here 10 here same thing so i'm going to go a little closer right here so and try and not get the camera thing so that you can see right down here is a sheep now it looks very goat like and we've talked about that because all the way over here is a goat also right but that right there is a Barbados black belly sheep and that is in our shave them to save them passport it made this US postage stamps now as you can see we've got a um, pig and chickens, cow, donkey, turkey, duck, goat, draft horses, another duck, 
and a sheep. So I thought that was really cool. You know, it was like, wow. A little bit of cross in my hobbies. <laughs> I think I'm going to run through the fiber purchases that I made on this screen because I think I can show the uh, balls of fiber better. But also, I'm sort of hanging out here waiting a little bit for some viewers to pop by before I go to the next screen. Um, and I will talk all about the Fiber Fair all through this. So I'm not going to hit a whole lot of what I did, who I talked to, and what I saw, that kind of thing, and what I didn't buy, <laughs> you know. Um, I just want to do the actual show and tell. And I will warn you if you're watching this as a VOD later on, these fibers may come out later on too as chatters come in and I want to show them off. But the very first thing I bought was a spinning towel you put on your lap. I just have been using little kitchen ones, right? And on this side over here is supposed to be an alpaca. On this side over here is supposed to be sheep. And it says Hoosier Hills Fiber Fair. Nice terry cloth. Got that embroidery on there. Feels. It is embroidery, yes. It is. Somebody did the machine embroidery of it. So that's nice and is sitting on my lap right now. That was the first thing I bought to support the group that puts on the Fiber Fair. By the way, I have never been to this Fiber Fair before. It is about two hours from me. I don't know why I've never gotten there. Um, it was big. It had about 45 vendors. It was in three different buildings. And I was very, very happy that I went because first of all, it was like the first one I've been to since fall 2019. Okay, so the next thing I, I went and bought, I went to somebody that I know from vending and all that. Um, they have Willie Knob Fiber Mill. And so he does his own um, processing of his own spinner flock, which is a mishmash. He is not trying to get breed specific fibers. He is he has a CVM ram, and he uses um, he has Shetlands. I mean, he has all different kinds of breeds, just a few of each. But he collect he has those shared, and he does a lot of dyeing, and he sells the fiber in these four ounce balls. Okay, and it's. A moderate yarn I mean it's a moderate wool as far as the feel it's very very easy to spin reminds me very much of Romney although I don't think he has Romney's but that's what it reminds me of and that camera is showing the green really well it's a blend of what I think is natural gray in there and the green so as you can see I got two balls so I have my eight ounces or so I have something cold in each hand. <laughs> so that's the uh, two, one, uh, one set that I bought from him of eight ounces. And then the other is, I have it down here, underneath my feet here. I put two colors together. That was kind of a fall tony thing. So this is very standard all brown. In fact, it's probably natural. I'm not sure, but it might be natural brown. And then this is your oranges, browns, and a little bit of green. There's, it's a lot lighter than it looks like on there. It looks very brownish on there, even the orange and all that. It, the orange has more greeny tan in it than what's coming across, but I thought I'd put these two together. So that was my first purchase. And therefore, <clears throat> I had my first big bag. I very um, smartly brought uh, bags to carry and put my fiber purchases in and nothing fit. <laughs> you know, they're just your standard shopping bags or project bags or that sort of thing. And nothing fit because everything was so big and chunky. 
So, you know, some fit, but it was not something I used. And I took two of them thinking, oh, I have lots of purchases and I only used one because what I did was every time I get a big bag, I hand it to hubby and when his hands were full, he went out to the car and put it in the car. The next thing was the fleece. And I'm not showing any of that on the stream because um, I it's huge. I mean, it's 2.9 pounds, but it's still big. And I've already done a little tiny stream on that. Uh, it's about six minutes long. It's the one that's right previous to this. If you go to my channel on Twitch and watch that, you'll get a really, really good close-up view of this fleece. It is a Shetland. It is a yearling. The lamb was bought, uh, was born in um, uh, 2020, and this was its first coat that was shared uh, just a couple months ago. It's gorgeous. It's black and white and there's probably three-fourths of it black, and the white is not really white. It has grays and tans and browns and a little bit of the black sticking to it. It's going to be a very marled looking yarn. And I have, I, I said three-fourths, I'm gonna say two-thirds is black and a third is white. And I have enough for two different projects in it. I'm already raspy. Hold on a minute here. <clears throat> it could be the cream. I have iced coffee and I've got cream in it. It could be the cream doing that. But that, that's a little better. So now Hubby does have to go to the car because he's got this great big huge bag of fleece and the bag of four balls of fiber. So he took that and I walked around some more. And the next thing that I purchased was um, at a fiber booth where they had a little, a few, like four fleeces, and they were Mondale, Mondale. And, you know, I've worked with Mondale once, and it was okay, you know, it was okay. But her fleeces were really, really crimpy and nice. They were all white. Um, and then she had processed fiber, and she had dyed a lot of it, and I, I it took the dye really nice and she had put it in color progressions and that sort of thing. She had yarn spun into um, the little mini skeins, which is the one thing I didn't buy that I sort of wish I did. But, you know, I figure I can do something like that. But anyway, I bought some of her fiber. And the reason I bought it is because when she had it processed, it is combed top. It is not roving. It is gorgeous because it's combed and it's top. This is how they put up merino. I mean, this is how they do merino in top. Now, this is not as soft as merino. I would say this is probably, um, you know, merino is usually around 22. I would say this feels like maybe 26, 27, 28, I'm just going by what it feels and you have to understand that my hands are so used to wool that I'm, some people would sometimes say it was felt coarser, but it is really nice. Doesn't have a lot of bounce to it. Um, going to be a very uh, nice yarn to show good open lace work or to show um, cable work, right? Now I only bought uh, four ounces. Okay, so that was $14. Um, I probably would wish that I'd bought more, but I was all the way around being thrifty in a way. You know, I was not going to not buy anything, but I was not going to go, go and buy everything, all of it. <laughs> I think I'll leave that out since I probably will show that later too. I'll leave it out. She put it in this nice little bag with a bow. That's all the fiber I bought. Believe it or not, the last thing that I bought is what you're going to be seeing me spin on. Yeah, spin on. <laughs> Let me get myself turned around here. 
and maybe get a little more comfortable. I'm having trouble being comfortable today. I'm, it's could be the rainy weather. Um, I'm not sure. It could be a little bit the close quarters. I've got everything here for a reason. I've got my uh, second camera set up a little different this time so that it's a little closer since I can't zoom the camera. So if I seem real fidgety today, that's why. All right, so here we go. I got a Nano. I got a purple Nano. <laughs> yeah, and what I am doing right now is spinning silk. This is the silk right here. Awesome silk. It was dyed by a lady that's no longer doing uh, any dyeing, um, Natural Obsessions. And this is 100% mulberry silk. I will tell the story of why I caved and bought the Nano a little bit later. I, I do want some people here to chat. But the truth, the bottom line reason, not cost, not that I needed another spinning wheel, not that I needed an electric, nothing like that. The bottom line was because it spins thin. And none of my spinning wheels can really do that. Now, I am spinning, drafting, extremely slow. Uh, instead of going fast, the motor going fast to put a lot of twist in, then I am letting the motor go slow, but delaying how uh, the fiber going onto the bobbin that allows more twist to enter. The thinner your single, the more twist you need. Still trying to get this a little bit so that you can see me drafting and the bobbin. I think that'll work. I have to pre-draft the silk. It won't draft out of a, a bunch like wool will draft. Because it's extremely linear and extremely long. So silk, the more pre-drafting you do, the more it'll help you if you want to spin really thin. just slides. It just glides out of the fiber supply. It glides through my fingers. Oh my gosh, there is nothing like silk. I will be honest, I was going to try Superwash Merino as my first project. My whole reason for wanting to spin thinner is for uh, sock yarn to be able to make a three ply. I will not be making socks out of this silk, but I couldn't resist the urge to try the silk because her, uh, the vendor's whole comment was, you cannot spin thick on the Nano. And if you're going to spin, you might as well spin the fibers that like to be spun thin. 
like cashmere and cotton and silk. So I thought, well, I'm going to try my first couple bobbins with this four ounces of silk. I've never been happy spinning silk on any of my other spinning wheels. Um, comes out too thick. And that's because they are uh, not scotch tension. They're the other, um, I, I forget what it's called. But basically, this is scotch tension. And scotch tension lets you spin really, really thin. But she did say, make sure you get enough twist. Pull it, hold it, count to five. Pull it, hold it, count to five, right? In other words, give it time for the twist to get in there. I think I am. I have been checking it now and then. and I think I am getting enough pretty good twist. Plus, Silk loves to hold twist. Once it gets twisted, it don't want to come undone. It, it just wants to hold it. There's no uh, part of that... Whoop, one thing I have to learn is go the right direction. There's no part of that Silk fiber that has little barbs like wool does to, to kind of stick out and keep the other fiber from, you know, sticking to it, right? Yeah, that helps hook the fiber some, but, but silk is just like the twist can wrap the entire, entire fiber. And, and so it gets good and twisted. So that's my little treatise on silk. And I already have really baptized my <laughs> uh, lap thing because it, the silk is just sticking to it like crazy. It's almost like a Velcro type. It's a Velcro type Terry. So this is what the drafted fiber looks like, as opposed to the undrafted fiber. You can see how dense and compact that is. There is on the very end of that mob and some wool. Um, when I bought this, um, I got it from Susan's Fiber uh, business up in was she's in Wisconsin. She is almost at every fiber fair and is a a major provider of everything. She's the lady I bought the drum my drum carter from many many years ago. So anyway, when I uh, she was sitting there playing with this uh, playing with one of these that she had set up and was talking to me about it and you know had had me sit down and try it and she just got some wool out and gave it to me so I have a little bit of wool on there that basically is what we started the leader with too and, and I just continued spinning But she said, don't spin too fast. I'm still a little uncomfortable with how slow she was saying to spin, but I can see that 
at a higher speed, the, the drafting actually disrupts the, the turning of the bobbin. So all I have to do is develop just this nice rhythm where I can get enough twist in it. She talked about that so much that, you know, of course that's what I'm worried about, right? Am I getting enough twist in this? Soap sticks to everything. It sticks to my hands. Fortunately, my hands aren't too rough right now. That can be a real problem. Your hands are too rough. You're trying to work with silk. One thing that can happen when silk is dyed is that it can get sticky, compacted and sticky. Fortunately, this is very, very well rinsed. It's not at all sticky. The fleece that I bought is spread out on a sheet in my living room and I am trying to decide whether I want to go ahead and watch it or not. It really wasn't in my plans and I said so in the stream. I said I wasn't going to wash it. I was going to put it away and not wash it, but I don't know. It just seems like it's very sheepy smelling. And it was pretty high lanolin when I was messing with it outside to separate it. It was in the sun. That really brings the lanolin out, which is one of the reasons I didn't pack it away right away. I wanted to make sure I gave everything time to kind of uh, dry up. The lanolin will still be there, but it won't be damp. It draws, when it's in the sun, it draws moisture. Cheap wool draws moisture. I, <laughs> not real sure why 
Anyway, every time I walk by it, I'm like, I should wash that. I need to start washing that. I'm going to put the white into the way it is into a pillowcase and at least work on the black since there's the most of that. One thing I did not do when I was there with her is change bobbins. This had the bobbin on it, out of the box, when it came out of the box. And we just, we checked the power cord, make sure it was okay, and then of course she was showing me how to spin it on it. Make sure I could, I understand the drawing and the feel of it, that sort of thing. The name of this uh, dye is Coffee Toffee. <laughs> no real brown in it, but it's definitely I can see the toffee. Butterscotch color. Silk is like this because it's real, right? They, they take the cocoons and boil them and it's got a sticky saracen on it 
so that it kind of sticks together. And each one of these strands, each one of these little tiny things is from the cocoon, right? And so it's just all bunches of them from the reeling put together. It's pretty amazing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm splitting apart the into things that I can draft out. But I, I, I can't call it top. I not real I know there's probably a word for it. I don't know what it is. She puts 100% mulberry silk. Oh, <laughs> she's got bleed risk on there. Okay. Yeah. Very possible. I may have to um, give it a Duncan dunk with in vinegar water after I wash it the yarn So it's a bit fiddly as far as having to pre-draft. Oops. Everything.
So in the three buildings, there were lots of people with yarn, but there was quite a variety of other things. There were a couple of fiber mills, there were alpaca people, there was one Angora breeder with Angora and a rabbit, there was spinning wheel makers, um, there was the general, looks like it might be a yarn shop, they had tons of magazines, a lot of them were back issues that you could pick up for a dollar. Um, people sold t-shirts, mugs, all that sort of thing with, you know, fiber related. Um, one was a cute t-shirt where it was a sheep and instead of the standard um, butcher chart like of a um, cow where it says steaks and that sort of thing, what it had hat, shawl, sweater. <laughs> I've seen it before, but it's cute. It's a cute t-shirt. One nice thing with I'm getting a real faint barber pole so I can see the twist. their um, little slot to put your single in is not made for thin singles and they make them the same size so that would be a nice little tiny modification if they could put uh, you know a thicker and a thinner get into some orange here now. sit close enough to the spinning wheel that uh, I end up sitting forward. Oh, I'm sorry people, I am just so tired today.
So the really interesting thing to me about this fiber fair probably is due to the fact that we didn't have any fiber fairs last year. And that is the fact I have never seen such a selection of fleece. Usually when I go to a fiber fair, I'm looking at people who have a dozen and then uh, people who have four or five, you know, uh, small flocks that way. There were two there that looked like literally they had 50 fleeces out on three big tables. And that's just amazing to have that much choice. I mean, seriously, it's... It's a good thing I only bought one. I could have bought four, five, six. There were so many beautiful fleeces. Now, I didn't specifically ask them. Um, you know, I, I talked to the gentleman that had the uh, Folks Family Farm that I bought the Shetland Yearling from, but I, you know, I didn't ask him specifically which fleeces are which. Uh, what got held over because I really don't think you can tell I think that they you know they held over fine and um, the other booth that had a whole bunch didn't have a, a vendor in it they were evidently on a break somewhere I'm sure they had a somebody kind of paying attention to it but I wouldn't you know I wasn't gonna go over there and poke around with unless there was somebody there to talk to and I had already bought a fleece so but I just I was so surprised the how much fleece there was and it's pretty cool to have that much choice um, A lot of the bigger fiber fairs I feel is very unbalanced and it's mostly yarn. It's not near enough fiber and I did not feel that way with this one. I felt like this one really was a fiber fair. I didn't get a real good join there. Not happy with that. The other thing I got to do was look at and uh, be told some things about the Spinolution wheels. Now there were not many wheels uh, for sale at the Fiber Fair. I saw a Magicraft and I, uh, not my Ara, but another kind, and I saw two Ashfords, a traditional and I don't know what the other was. And then there was um, a gentleman who uh, makes all sorts of beautiful woodworking things, and I forget his name. I'd have to. I have a really nice chart of where everybody was, so I have the names of the uh, vendors, which is a good thing because I don't remember names well. He had gorgeous. Nitty Notties, Spool Winders, Swifts, Spinning Wheels. I mean, he had really, really beautiful woodworking stuff. Warping boards. Was one real nice shop for buying wool for um, this is your wool fabric for your latch hook and punch needle rugs you know punch work or um, latch work 
I have seen them in the past up at um, the one in Ohio I go to. I am so glad I chose this fiber. This is making me so happy. And let me tell you about being happy. After we got done walking through all the three buildings, of course, I sat a couple times. I need to, to rest my knee, but, um, you know, we went back to the car. And after we got on the road where we we're on the freeway and I'm not looking for how to get home, right? I'm not looking for the route. Literally, I was just sitting there while I was driving and just grinning. Just grinning. And uh, what I was thinking of was just like, oh yeah, fiber fairs have, they give you endorphins. <laughs> but I, it wasn't, it wasn't the fiber. As beautiful as that was and as much fun I had a smile on my face for buying what I bought. But beyond that, it was the fact that in many cases I would stand and talk to people that I have known over the years at other fiber fairs, from other fiber fairs, you know, for 20 minutes because we haven't seen each other and it's all about talking to people. And it's not necessarily, some of it's about fiber. I mean, some of it's about their business and what they're doing and how they're handling it. Uh, I certainly got into that with a couple of the vendors, but it was more than that. It was like, oh, how are you? How have you been? What's going on in your life? Everything all right? You know, it was talking face to face from a distance. We had masks on, but from a distance, face to face with somebody other than the husband. <laughs> right. <laughs> My, uh, get out of your household and talk to somebody besides your household. That's what I was smiling about. up is I have a new toy to play with. I have a new spinner. I just got it on Friday. It's 3D printed.
Yes. Yes. It's called a Nano. It is an eel. And... Oop, wrong way. Let me get the box here a minute. I should have had this card out anyway. Electric Wheel Nano by Dreaming Robots. They uh, kickstarted this maybe two years ago. I don't know if you're familiar with Kickstarter or not. It's a, a crowdfunding site. And uh, he has gone on to make a bigger version. This this being the Nano being the smaller one. But um, they're all in production now. Okay, so he didn't... It's It's not brand new. It's been out for a little while. I just had never gotten one. And I had the opportunity to pick one up when I went to a fiber fair shopping on Friday. Cost um, $107. And then tax. Or maybe it's $110. It was $110 because... The, it was 117 with tax, so yeah, it was around 7% tax. Anyway, I think it's $110. Extra $3 doesn't matter. It has a few... Uh, quirks as far as it's so lightweight okay um, you have to have it on some kind of non-skid surface or you have to do like I did and I'm, I stuck it to some tape on the table but you can uh, bolt it to a board if you want um, but you have to have it something to keep it in place because you can just drag it across whatever surface it is. It's so lightweight. That's half the price of a 3D printer. Yeah. I don't know what... I mean, there's a fair amount of plastic, and you get... This is a bobbin right here. You get six of these with it for that price. And um, it includes... They snap together. I mean, you have two ends and the shaft for the bobbin. So you can see how much 3D printing goes in it, really. I mean, I'm sure they have dedicated printers, right, for each part. But And maybe there are bigger versions than I'm familiar with of the, th of the printers. I have seen one 3D printer one time. Um, it kind of looked like a glass box. I don't know if that's typical, but you could see what was going on in there. They were using it so you could see what was going on. Watch the. Uh, it was a. It was a, another 3D printer of spinning supplies, and they were, you know, had one there as a demo so you could see how it was being printed. Oh, well, of course. Come on, I understand retail. That retail is always a markup. I mean, I, I, you have to think of all the design protocol that went into this.
but it has a huge advantage over the spinning wheels that I have in that it can spin this really, really thin single. And it has to do with the, it has to do with the way it is set up to tension back here. It's a very easy, light tensioning. It's not pulling in hard. And it also has to do with being able to spin extremely slow so that you can draft really, really thin and then let time to put a lot of twist in there so that that thin is uh, going to hold together. You know, if it's too thin and it doesn't have a lot of twist, it'll fall apart. So it needs a lot of twist. Oh, not at all. I didn't think, no, I did not think that way at all. And I understand that English is not your first uh, language. I, yes, I, I'm amazed at the price. I'm, I'm serious. The wood spinning wheels, the big ones, are $1,000. You know, the, the woodworkers get that much for the wheels. So it's an, a very cool way for people to get something they can spin with, right? At a very economical price. That's okay. Well, that's interesting. That that would be the plastic. Uh, that would be the uh, cost of the materials. Yes, a thousand dollars. The okay would be. 10, 10 hours. Well, time is money. I mean, you you know, you have to think about that too. I suppose if you have a business making things to sell that you create on a 3D printer, you have to charge for, I mean, you have to develop a business plan that has a certain amount of money directed towards that time. you stop by <laughs> nice to talk to somebody that knows the 3d printing part of it I'm just inter interested in the spinning part of it you know It was a total surprise. I mean, I didn't plan to buy it. Uh, I I knew they'd been out for a couple years, and I was like, no, I'm not going to buy one. And then I had a chance to actually sit down and spin on it. I had a chance to talk to the lady who was um, selling them and who has worked with them for a while. And, I, you know, it was like, changed my mind. It changed my mind. What I'm spinning is 100% silk. It's amazing. you when I can.
Well, that was quick. I don't think that was even a uh, two minutes. <laughs> what I'm doing right now is I have to pull this silk a little bit so that it's good and loose so that when I am spinning it, it's called drafting, but when I spin it, it'll be slide right out of there real nice. You are fast. <laughs> Very straightforward. Um, not a lot of, I, like I like I said, it's gonna spin pretty much the same kind of yarn, same single. Not gonna get a, a variety of yarns out of it. That's not uncommon in spinning wheels. Even the big ones can be kind of specific about what they'll make, the kind of yarn they'll make. It's small, so it's not going to make a lot of yardage of you know, and that's okay when it's real thin anyway. But uh, yeah, that that's another thing. It's not going to make a lot of yardage. I saw spinning wheels that had bobbins so big they would hold a pound of the yarn. You know, so they make them that way too. But that's a big wood one. This yarn, I w will make another single and ply it, so there'll be two strands put together, and then it'll be something very lacy, right? It's lace weight yarn, is what it's going to be. And it could almost be used for embroidery. Um, it might fray too much as you were sewing. Just, I'm not real sure. Depends on, like if you used a coarser cloth that had bigger holes, you know, it wouldn't fray as much. But that's the thickness it's going to be. crochet with it and make lace. Or knit lace edging.
currently have it plugged into an electric outlet, but it has an adapter where you can run it off your phone battery. <laughs> I don't know how long the phone will last, but it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you came here because of the crafts, but you may stay here because of me. Well, that's nice. I'm glad you're here. Like I said, it's nice to have some, uh, somebody who knows the printing end of it. I can appreciate it. Did you, were you the one that was talking about going to live on a boat? Has that happened? that was. I was talking about I live on a boat. Well, I did remember that. I and I but I still thought we got into a discussion about living on living on a boat. And I remember your uh, question about getting the uh, spam phone calls. <laughs> that one tickled me. Only because you only get a couple of years. That's what tickled me. Oh my gosh, we get so many. We even get them on our cell phones. <clears throat> good way to be able to avoid it. Now you have me curious. What is your native tongue? What is your native language? Because you do English very, very well. Especially to type and spell. Danish, yeah. <laughs> I think you told me that once before. 
But after not getting the boat right, I didn't want to guess again. Um, very, very little. Um, as far as what I know about Denmark. The, um, every once in a while something I watch, you know, documentaries or something, we'll be talking about something there. It's not a... Um, strong fiber country. In other words, you know, raising sheep or that sort of thing. Um, Iceland is. And um, so, so, you know, so much of what I know about the other world uh, is related to what it's involved in the fiber business and what they raise and that sort of thing. And, you know, then there's food where I know all of that Italy has its, and German and that sort of thing, but I don't know a specific Danish food, right? There's just not um, things that jump out like that like it does for some countries. Hi, veggie! <laughs> I, I get the feeling that the Danish people want it that way, right? And Denmark is small. I do know that. Veggie, I got a nano. <laughs> Veggie is a spinner, too. AMA. AMA knows... We've, we've been talking about the 3D printing part of it. <clears throat> but, yeah. I got it at the Fiber Fair on Friday... Got it from Susan Fiber, which is in Wisconsin, and she's at she's had a, a big fiber business. I mean, 
you can get anything from her uh, big, big shop that is always at every fiber fair. I got my drum carter from her years ago. And that's, um, she was, as I walked around, it was pretty empty on Friday. There wasn't a whole bunch of people. Uh, hopefully they were busier on Saturday. But as I walked around her uh, corner, she was sitting spinning on this at the end of a table right there at the end of her booth. And I said, ooh, and then, oh. And so she, of course, made me sit down and play with it. And, and then when I said, uh, what, what convinced me to buy it was she told me, she says, you cannot spin anything but thin. She wanted me to buy the bigger one, right? But I said, I got a electric. And she said, well, you can't spin anything but thin on the Nano. And I said, that's fine, because I can't spin thin on any of my other spinning wheels. So I was like, yay. That's what I wanted for, to spin thin, which is what I'm doing with this silk. So we, we've been talking about Denmark veggie. Um, if uh, you know anything about it, because like I said, I don't know much about it, and that's where AMA's, AMA's from. Denmark's national dish is fried pork with parsley sauce. Okay, I'm not gonna try and say that. <laughs> Although it looks like Stegfles mead persilles soves. Persil soves. Nah, I butchered that. Never mind. <laughs> Pork? Pork with parsley. I like that. Do they bake it? Do they roast it? Do they uh, sauce it? I mean, what makes it so special? I didn't get a good join there. I'm going to stop that. Nice try. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Close only counts in Danish. <laughs> it's speaking Danish, right? There's a uh, idiom, Amer there is an English idiom that says uh, close enough for horseshoes, right? Which is, their horseshoes is a game where you pitch horseshoe to try and get it around a stake. So I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but. And so a lot of times that is turned into an idiom for close enough, you know, for whatever reason, right? You have, okay. Um, any more American sayings? Well, you know, I suppose I do, but I suppose they would come out in my speech without me thinking about it, because if I try to think about them right now, I don't, I can't.
the one that's currently making the rounds among the uh, it was in the, the generation that my daughter is in. Um, if if it's been a long time since you've done something, and you know instead of saying it's been a long time, they're saying in a minute, of course, which is a very short time. But they're they're imp implying that it's been a long time. It's just a, a weird twist of. Um, you know, the time words. Right by and almost beat snowman off the horse. It means that was close. It that close, but not good enough. Right by and almost beat snowman off the horse. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Right. That's a good one. I mean, that's totally different than anything American. Although one thing we will say is, if we're making something. You know, and there's mistake in it. Like, say, we've knitted something and there's a mistake in it. But they'll say, well, it'll pass the six-foot test. Or the they'll say it'll pass the um, horse galloping by test. In other words, it's not something you can see unless you're looking really, really close. So that one had a horse in it. sorry for. Well, now that's philosophy. <laughs> so in America, we say something like, what you don't know won't hurt you. And that's very similar, I think, very similar sentiment. You won't feel sorry for it, but we're saying it won't hurt you. Danish attitude. a bad hunter. That one's funny. <laughs> I'd be a hungry hunter. I'm not a hunter.
grass is always greener on the other side of the hedge. Uh huh. Except it says the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. We don't have hedges. You have hedges for fences, but yes. That one I know. <laughs> grass is always greener. You use both in Denmark? Fence and hedge. It is pouring rain outside. It's been doing this off and on all day. Vinji, you want to see some fiber? Are you still there or are you busy? Did you, did you see my little short stream with the fleece I bought? Uh, it's Shetland, black and white. You'll have to catch it. It's only six minutes long if you haven't watched it. Um, this is, oh wait, I'm going to switch cameras here. Okay. Der Ugler I Mosen. There are owls in the bog. It means something's wrong. Oh, there's owls in the bog. You like the outside stream? I like streaming outside, except it was very hot in that sun. All right, this is Monadale. Can't find the camera. And it is Comb Top, which is... Oh, you're... Okay, AMA saying there are owls in swamp. There are owls in the swamp, okay. Um, Monadale is kind of an unusual breed. It um, feels like Romney, it's pretty cool. And this is comb top, and that is why I bought it, because it was comb top instead of the traditional mill processed roving. And I got, I only bought four ounces, but I think I'm gonna really I bought it because it was different, right? Something that I've never I've not had. And I love the I love the fact that it's top. And then um, I got this is more your traditional roving. This is breed mix and um, each of these are four ounces. Well they look bigger in the camera. But they're wound pretty loose too. Uh, Wooly Knob is a fiber mill in our area, and he does all this from his sheep. Okay, he has a fiber flock, and he dyes it and processes it. And I believe this is green dyed and a natural gray. And it's probably got Shetland in there and um, that sort of thing. It, it, he doesn't mark anything as breed specific because he blends everything. So I got eight ounces of that. And I also bought, because he's a buddy of mine, so I gave him extra business. But I bought a natural brown and this to go with it. So I'll have these two together. So that's, that's really, besides the fact that I bought that big fleece and, and the nano. That's what I bought. Common sense is not so common after all. Huh. Yeah. That I can't think of any English one that would relate to anything like that. This silk that I'm spinning is from uh, my stash. So it'll count towards stash dash. Um, had it for quite a while because I didn't want to spin silk on anything else. I need my other wheels.
sorry. I got really tired of that. I've been listening to that music for a while now. Time to go with something else. You know what the best part was? Talking to people. It just was so wonderful. I saw, of course, people I know and sat and talked, stood and talked, talked to the complete stranger about her alpacas. She's having a shearing day and she says, you a spinner? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, come, come buy alpaca blankets. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody, it's like somebody to talk to. Thief thinks every man steals. Oh, yeah? Oh. You tell me if you want me to stop. I'm just having fun at seeing my reaction. <laughs> I'm having fun thinking about if we have something similar in, um, I don't, you know, there are many that don't really have something similar in English. All right. I don't think I was getting enough twist that last batch. Yeah, it doesn't look twisted enough. That's English, yes. The one who laughs, laughs, laughs best. It's hard to say. That's a tongue twister in many ways. the creek to get water. <laughs> oh, that, I'm, I'm sorry. I think that's basic idea is you're making it harder than it needs to be, right? Do not walk across the creek to get water. See, I like that one. Um, AMA, if, are you familiar with the fact that uh, Twitch has, um, where you can watch the videos after they're not live, you can watch them on demand, and what Veggie's talking about, um, yesterday I used my phone and I streamed outside. And if you go, it's only six minutes, but if you go look at that, you'll see what it looks like in my front 
uh, view and around, you know, you won't see my house or anything, but you'll see what I see, if, like, when I sit on my front porch. I'm sitting at a table out in the yard, in my front yard is what I'm doing, but I live on a lot of acreage, and so there's a lot of land in front of me where I was sitting. That's good. This is not politically correct, yeah. <laughs> I like children play best. <laughs> but when I stream like that, I don't have more extra cameras. So I you don't see my face or anything. It's it's just the fiber. I was showing off a uh, fleece from a sheep that I bought. Do not bring sand to the Sahara. Same as don't cross the creek to get water. Actually, idiot is spelled the same. <laughs> the last idiot is not born yet. <laughs> These are all great. Blood is thicker than water. Yeah, we know that one. Veggie says, I'm half tempted to do a park stream after watching your fleece stream, but I worry about having a strong connection. Yeah, I was not, I was using the internet. I was not using my cellular. Um, and I am surprised that the internet reached out where, as far as I was. I don't know. I have both turned on, but it didn't look like I had much. But we do have 5G. Um... So that internet, 5G, I think, is, uh, goes out further. Not real sure on that, but anyway, it, it did work. Even my husband was like, you can't do that. I said, I think I can. I did once before. I have seen people, uh, walking, hiking, right? and using their phone, so it probably just depends on your service. No roses without thorns. Better late than never. Yes, I. we know that one. Uh, roses. I never promised you a rose garden. That's actually lyrics in a song. That's another one we know. Cannot see the forest for the trees. Yep. Funny sense of humor. Do not sell the skin before the bear is shot. I can't think of what the, what we would have that's similar. That I mean, that's funny.
Don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's exactly right. That's a good one. It's similar, yes. Very, very similar. Blind hen can also find the grain. Oh. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's uh, sort of what, what it means to me and what we would say. Nope, that's another one. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's the one I just said. Okay. So you say that too. It is said by a famous person as fugitives from prison with a spoon. That one died that one I can't make sense of. Unless uh, spoon isn't the right word. <clears throat> is digging a long tunnel. Oh, okay, so it's it, trying to escape from prison with digging with a spoon, and anybody who is trying to do something too hard, I mean, that's just crazy, too hard, too huge. Spoon is right, yeah. He, Spoon would be right, yeah. Okay. Carl August. Oh. Lorenzo. Lorenzo is his last name. What's he famous for? Is he a writer? Is he a politician? Is he... And he's Danish, right?
Oh, he's a famous prisoner escaping. Okay. So, okay. Did he really escape through a tunnel? Using a spoon? <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. I can see the time. It's a tourist attraction, right? <laughs> I have been to Alcatraz, which is a very uh, famous prison from like the 1920s, 30s. Uh, it's on an island off of the West Coast, and it's a uh, tourist area now you can go visit but it's um, <clears throat> you know they it's not fixed up at all I mean it's it's pretty intense bleak whatever to go visit you have to ride a boat over there they make jokes about don't miss the boat going home right you don't want to spend the night there. So, in the dark, all cats are gray. Uh, AMA, what we, I'm going to be uh, closing stream here now. I've been uh, sitting the two hours and I, I need to move. <clears throat> but next time you come see me, let's talk about some of the places I have traveled and visited in the United States. I think you might enjoy that. And you can tell me about Denmark. I would enjoy that. have been to Canada and I have been to some of the Caribbean islands because I cruise but I have not been to uh, I have been to Mexico but I have not been to anything beyond the American area I haven't been over to Europe or anything It has been, thank you. Oh my goodness, let me switch here. It's been very nice talking to you. And Veggie, thank you for stopping by. You all come by again. I'll be on Tuesday morning. It's probably not gonna be your time of the day. Um, it'll be very early probably for you, AMA. You may be working, whatever. And I will be back late Thursday night so that um, if you're earlier than me that should work for you too so and I'm always here Sundays so see y'all later bye <laughs>